I think I did not switch it. Uh, so the Giri will not be joining us today. Uh, we were talking about uh, the PR uh, timetable, time considerations. Um, I try, I will try to take Giri's head home as best as I can. I'm not sure how good I am with that. So uh, there's that. Okay, um, I wanted to start probably with um, um, uh, PR90. <clears throat> um, Dave made some comment. This is the <clears throat> revision of the revision of another PR, rebasing it, and Dave made some comments. I accepted all of his comments, the, the editorial comments, and um, so this is about recentness, and that these are the two the comments that remain. The first one goes back to that original discussion. How's my audio working this morning, by the way? You hear me? All right. Uh, it goes back to that original discussion we had at the hackathon where the editors met out in the hallway or whatever, and there was this discussion that we had around the table about freshness versus recency, which I think was originally Ned's point during then. And it was explained to me that he was using the term, and I think it was Ned, but I may be wrong, uh, that the difference between the terms is one was referring to how long ago the evidence was constructed. The other one was for referring to how long ago the claim values that appear on there were constructed. And those are two different concepts, um, but this text is not talking about that. This text is only talking about when, they, when the evidence was constructed and ignores the points about the claims being constructed and still tries to define recency versus freshness. And so I didn't know if there was an intentional change in the terms and loss of a concept, or I didn't know what the, what the point of this uh, PR was. Um, no, I think there is a misconception about recentness here. Ned and I were talking about uh, developing these terms for quite some time now due to the confusion of uniqueness and uh, recentness both combined typically in freshness. Um, and I remember this discussion on the hallway. Ned uh, explained it to me at some point. No, right, there was not a hackathon. Which hackathon was that? Berlin? Before that, right? It, it, it was that. It was the one where we were all, all first uh, designated as editors of the uh, IETF version. Ah, uh, yeah, that was a hackathon on an IETF, I think. Yes, um, Yes, yes, yeah, because of what could have been, this is too early. So, uh, yes, I remember that one. So, um, yeah, there are, um, I think, uh, the freshness section, uh, is this the freshness section here? Because I know we have conflicting yeah. texts. I'm not sure how much we should talk about the current freshness text because thomas and i were wordsmithing to the last minute literally uh and thomas had the pen for the last final hour yeah i have our um about new text for this so i'm not sure how okay. much so is it better that we come back to this then yeah the, uh, out of the four that i've reviewed uh this one is the one that is probably the easiest to get consensus on but none of them are actually easy right i think all of them are contentious and I have change requests on all of them. I'd also be happy accepting none of them, um, but uh, I don't know that it's easy to make progress. Okay. I, I thought this was the easiest, and we I and we can resolve this, this quickly. Was, <laughs> uh, I was hoping this was the one we were going to start with because I think this is the only one we could actually make progress on today. But uh, I think it needs mm -hmm. a bunch of work that I don't understand. But it's a better starting point than any of the other ones I thought. Okay. Maybe we can ask Thomas' opinion about uh, how far he got today and how feasible it would be to look at a new version. Otherwise, we should uh, have progress and declare victory on incremental. Uh, uh, I was like, I was slightly confused about the scope of this. This is 90, right? So yeah. if yeah. it's 90, I think this is subsumed by the by the latest one we are working on with uh, Hank. Which I don't remember the number, uh, but but this could be I think close because uh, you know uh, the the, right. the result of the, the the gigantic discussion here was uh, you know go out and and make another PR for uh, for this yeah. this one you think is is been been eclipsed by uh, your recent one is what you think. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think so. Yes. So, do you think 90 should be closed or abandoned? Uh, good question. Maybe we come back to this when the other one is crash burning. I don't know. Um, um, so, uh, it's the candidate. I, I, I have a feeling that these changes at the top were are not in conflict. No. Especially spelling, you know, pluralization. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I, I will, I I will uh, make that a. I will make pull that in separately. Yeah, that is a very good idea. Thank you. Yeah, up through line eight fifty seven, right? Yeah, that first paragraph. Eight fifty seven. Yeah, I think including this extra sentence. Um, this one effectively the burden of. Nope, not that one. Because if you look at the preceding sentence, okay. it's talking about a relying party for an attestation result. And the burden to freshness of an attestation result is also a duty of the relying party. So I think the sentence is not correct. Okay. All right. Fair enough. But, uh, okay. Anyway. Okay. So it requires further discussion. How's that? It's it's at least not correct as is. So I was not able to find the context so far. So maybe <laughs> I don't know. But this is, I think, the uh, the uh, most uh, meaty uh, uh, item. Yeah. Ninety one is a, is an attempt I made to uh, reflow section 10 uh, in a way that includes uh, um, most of uh, uh, Hank's point about um, recentness and, and and so on. Um, so I made a first commit uh, and that was, uh, you know, at, at least from a different pers perspective was pretty clear. Then Hank added a couple of commits more and there I, I have some confusion uh, coming from you know uh, conflicting branches or something because uh, the, the 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 view then becomes a bit uh, hazy. Uh, so I I don't know whether it's worth uh, uh, focusing on on the cur current state of uh, of this PR or or look at a different place where we are actually uh, editing uh, the text. Want to uh, share a different screen? Point. That was my fault. I, uh, I accidentally rebased a branch locally. I did not make, uh, realize that I created a uh, PR as a commit for this PR from that, and it totally screwed everything. Sorry for my French. Um, so uh, all these 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 edits here were not intentional. I did not see that uh, uh, in a hurry. Let's call it that. And yes, and Thomas, uh, yeah, that is the link with the text we are talking about for freshness section. I'm very sorry about all these. Um, changes in this PR, they are reverting things back to old stuff. Okay, so the the PR uh, itself is broken, is what you're saying. Yes, yes. And you want to go to this this here. I broke it. Yeah. But now we can't see the yes, right? Now you can't see what? Yes. Now, well, that's what's the problem. So, um, let, let's talk about the text for a moment, and let's see if I can fix the diffs. Fair enough. Uh, can't tell. No. Okay. Uh, well, you want to come back in ten minutes, and I'll fix the dick diffs. You do is dish dish ninety one and start afresh on uh, on 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 master yeah. branching off master yes. and doing another thing as so, well. Which incorporates so basically this is a rewrite of the freshness section. So if you want to take a look at this and uh, this is uh, right. so, so what I should do is I should I should rebase on master, take this text and stuff it in as uh, into the yeah, markdown as master. This is the whole section. Uh, this is the whole section. Okay. So why don't we just read this for the moment, um, and I'll 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 pull that in against master right away. That is because diff won't help here a lot. This is a rewrite. And it is based on uh, uh, Thomas's uh, uh, sanity checks. Let's, let's really call him that because he uh, was uh, very elaborate in explaining when he thought semantically this is basically the same, this is just a finer granularity, or this is a combination of the two above. So, uh, so we are, uh, Thomas, uh, sanity checked most of it. Sorry for speaking. So. Uh, and you can copy the link from the chat. If you have not seen, seen that, uh, this link is also in the chat. You don't have to watch it, uh, read it on uh, a chat screen uh, in WebEx. Uh, 
um, and I'm just reformatting your text to start new sentences on new lines. Yeah, I think the different design styles here, sorry. Yeah, well, it just seems to work better with diff. Do that. I uh, understand. And then when we add, then when we add a word, we don't change the subsequent says sentence. Yes, add a word I, to sentence A, then it doesn't it doesn't cause a diff for sentence B. I actually agree. Although it is nice that GitHub can show us a diff of the markdown as markdown. Oh, cool. So my impression is compared to the text that I think I saw yesterday um, is that um, so you've put these two uh, you've turned what I thought were should be sub subsection titles into comments and then you no longer have four of them you have two of them yeah and then we have a paragraph explaining how uh, the combination of these two can uh, you know uh, create uh, more creative um, um, situations where, for example, we we, um, we do we did this beacon beacon style uh, attestation that uh, Hank um, uh, was proposing in um, in, uh, in the fourth uh, mechanism, uh, which I think is a variation on the nonce um, uh, modulo uh, defining what the nonce is. Really. Um, so this is just an example now uh, as, an, as an instantiation of uh, of the nonce based schema. Um, and then we have another one, which is uh, first a nonce based thing to synchronize clocks and then um, um, uh, doing timestamp based uh, um, on um, ticks. Uh, yes, and that covered the third one. And I appreciate you getting that third one in there as well in the in the text. So I like how you updated it. So I don't think the rich diff is helpful, but maybe. Uh, so I pushed your text in uh, um, to this PR. Uh, that's probably completely screwed up the, any of the conversation. I don't know if the rich diff is better. I suspect it as such, so. So it looks like there's no text retained, right? All sentences are new. There's a yeah, just, well, the rich the rich diff suggests there's maybe a small bit that's renewed, but there's a lot of text that actually reused. It's just um, you know I shuffle that around a bit and uh, and and that's it. And I have some some precision here and there. And I the thing that I did it is substantial. I think is removing the uh, replay attack protection. Uh, which seem to be the goal of the whole thing, with, uh, which is not, in fact, for freshness. The non-space thing is uh, is only about uh, locking timelines uh, from, from different part participants. Um, what was the old text about um, replay protection? I don't remember there being old text about replay protection. The oldest text is at the top here now. The the, the section stuff, it is important to prevent replay attacks where an attacker, blah, blah, blah. Which... Oh, gotcha. Okay. So there, okay. Oh. Old that's no longer correct. Okay, gotcha. So it's being able to replay across the expiration. Got it. Okay. That, that's the only really substantial thing. The rest is reflowing and uh, you know reorganization of what we had and trying to fit in what uh, Hank uh, was was telling about in in, in PR ninety. Uh, trying to you know make it that succinct, succinct uh, very, very very you know crisp. Um, um, organization of the text, but, uh, but otherwise, uh, Thomas, I like what you did here. I think it was really well, well collapsed. Good stuff. So I've not had a chance to read it yet. I've only gotten through the first two paragraphs and have a wording comment on both of the first two paragraphs. Cool. All right. Do, do you want to pipe them in or do you want to um, share them with I us? I think it's easy enough for you to just do them. So in line 850, whether it says whether they included claims, if you do a suggested uh, phrase addition to see what people think. Yep. Right after claims and before can, where it says claims can, in between claims and can, I would say claims and their values. And this alludes to the fact that the claim and the value could have a different timestamp. Yep. 
And that's, that's my first one. The claim type and the value could have different timestamps. That's curious. What uh, absolutely. Is hard. Because uh, the claim itself was only composed when you create the evidence. The value may have been created at boot or, or you know, whatever it was. And so those two things can have different timestamps. And this is actually alluded to in the, in the next paragraph. So, okay. so yeah, I'm so not happy with the word. Yeah. I'm not happy with the word epoch. Um, not either, but um, I, I would be just, I would just remove, i.e. the epoch. Uh, we, use, we use epoch a bit down. Plus one to Michael's point. Mm -hmm. I think it's more yeah. okay. so we need we need to find another word because we use it a bit yeah. or timestamp yeah no 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 we have to there's a there's a the epoch is well defined so it's it's easy it's zero it's relative sign zero and uh so that's an epoch and that's the uh, problem that i have is that for a lot of people it's not relative time zero it's absolute time zero no actually it's it's time scale time zero the time scale can be absolute or relative i think I'm agreeing um, so, with Michael that the easiest way to address it is to not use that term. Yeah, but then you have to write a lot of words instead. Use time let's, stamp. let's let's come back to this. Okay, let's come back to this. Okay, maybe it's justified further down second, that it's second paragraph. I had a comment on line eight fifty seven. I think it was suggested text on that one, and I would change uh, energy near the very end. Into the second line, that would change energy to resource. Yeah, the most put, uh, energy after the EG. Yeah, because... I think I, 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 exactly that change it was somehow doubled up. Thank you. Yeah. If you it, it, me... it, and what I'm thinking is there are other cases where energy is not really constrained, but say bandwidth is because you're on a pay per byte basis and so things like that. So, yes, exactly. This was mixed up. Uh, I, I thought we had this, Hank. Uh, did, yeah, didn't... This, yeah. I so I accidentally oh. removed it, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dave did exactly what I also did. So <laughs> uh, that's as far as I've gotten reading so far. That's as far as I've got. Uh, I, I need to read more. So. No, but we're in wild agreement. <laughs> Here you use the word epoch. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, and I like the even on a even on it should say even on a per claim basis uh, later in that same row. We try to capture that. I know that you want this, Dave. So uh, there was some, and also uh, here, um, eat is uh, doing metadata about claims. Yeah, yeah so exactly. That's, that's exactly Ned's original point that I understood from way back when. So, so we 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 try to capture all that. That is, uh, yeah. and I think the first claim is from from Thomas effectively. Hold on, don't scroll past that. Mm -hmm. Do not understand the last phrase. The ability to distinguish time of collection from time of creation of claims. I want to make sure I understand the intent here. Time of collection, is that the per claim timestamp or is time of collection something else is what I'm confused about? I think if you just do, put a period at the comma and deleted all the rest of the sentence, I think it would be correct. Which comma, please? There. there. Yeah, I'm saying if you deleted everything, I mean, I'm hoping that that is redundant with the rest of the sentence, and deletion of that is no loss of information. I wondered as well. When I read that, I th I read it, Dave, as the point you were making earlier. That is the the time that the evidence was created might be different from the time that the claim was made about the evidence. Yeah, that was the intention. Yeah. And the reason that I the way that I read the first part of the sentence is uh, even on a per claim basis, if wanted, uh, actually is talking about two cases. Either it's on a per claim basis or it's not. And I believe that's actually the same point. Right. Whereas, as well as, sounds like that you're saying, and there's another orthogonal concept too, and I don't think they are. I think it's saying the same thing two different ways. Mm. So that's why I'm suggesting just deleting it and only saying it once. To uh, well, I think that there's a separate a separate issue here, which is to say you can talk about each claim individually, or you can talk about the body of claims as a whole, and for each claim you can distinguish the 
time that the evidence that it's about was generated from the time the claim was made. So I think there's two different yeah. concepts going on here. I didn't show, if, if you were to change as well as to, so as to, uh, sorry, as well as the ability to. Uh, oh, yeah, that might. Lead all the way up to the two. Yeah, so as to, keep going, keep deleting, because you got two twos in there. Delete the next four words. That is how I'm interpreting the intent of the sentence. Uh, and maybe delete the last comma as well, just the, just the punctuation. But uh, I don't know if that was the intent of those who wrote the sentence. Yeah. Yeah. What, Michael, you're showing now is how I read the sentence, or the intent of the sentence. One of the intents could be this. There might be others, but this is a prominent one. Can can, it, can we be a little bit? Is there an actual definition of what we're talk in this case in the document? Well, the only time we were discussing that, I think, before you <laughs> arrived, it's up here. Oh, sorry about that. And and we, Dave and I, both had a problem with the word epoch up here. Um, because we think of it as absolute time zero, and the claim is that uh, could be relative time zero. Um, yeah, well, epoch is well defined in, in the EDITF, I assume. So, uh, no, no it's I not. don't think it's well defined. It's, it's definitely yeah, not. Okay. Oh, shoot. So, it's no, either January 1st, 1970, or at some other date that somebody oh, picked. That, that, that's right? And that's, that's what we understand. Yeah, no, that's that's a epoch. Do you have like Excel? Microsoft has like five epochs. Uh, so, um, yeah, yeah, but but they're all absolute. They're all absolute times for which a reference is again. They're not relative times to an event. Oh, yeah, this is that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm I'm, I'm using the TLS, you know, uh, version of this, which is a the epoch of a key. <laughs> the point is, uh, there's different parts of the IETF that use have different meanings. Of and so that's what we mean by so well-defined. Maybe we should put in the TLS reference here because that is well known. And that's a very good example how this works. What's the TLS reference? I'm, I'm not familiar with it. I have to look it up. Well, Thomas, do you have it at hand? Most people view that as um, a value zero, you know, a value when the, when the, when the internal clock is set to zero. On a device, on, in terms of a time, in terms of the time of day. Exactly. There's a time scale, and there is a zero in that time scale, and that's always the epoch. It doesn't matter if it's a uh, uh, relative or absolute. It's it's in your time well, scale. That's where we take an exception to what you're saying. We are think it thinks that it always is 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 uh, absolute. Yeah, you think, but. I don't know how to respond to that. So it's not the fact. It's not that. <laughs> it's it's just an uh, a belief, I assume. Yeah, and it was actually the word at the bottom in, in the. It was it was below in terms of how it was used. It seemed to be not actually referring to an epoch, but I agree. Maybe, uh, and I'm not I'm not sure what what it was referring to, which is where I got confused. Yeah, that's good. So that is important, most more important. So if you don't think it means what it means. That's that's a problem. <laughs> if you is, were to replace uh, uh, fine grained epic assignment with fine grained uh, time determination, it's probably more layman's text that's understandable. I'm the time determination was uh, the wording that I threw out. But no, no, it's not just a random time stamp. It is the start where you reset the counter to zero, so to speak. When you are you are you are, you establish a new time scale and start with zero. That's it's a duration literally. Durations always start with zero. So my my my, 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 English English dictionary, my implementation detail. My, my English dictionary uh, says uh, a particular period of time in history or a person's life. I mean, <laughs> it's a period of time. It's not a it's not a point in time. It's a period of time. That's correct. Yeah. And so here, this is not a period of time. This is a point in time that's being referred to, and that's part of the reason why Epic is wrong. Um, pop, 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 pop. That, that's debatable because uh, uh, th th this point in time might be rough. Um, so it might be an interval, time span as well. 
It's not necessarily one, you know, uh, a point in, in, in the timeline that is perfectly and uniquely identifiable. It's talking about the time of collection. If you mean it's a time range during, it's a, it's a time confidence interval or something. I'm saying that's yeah, probably yeah, there's, way there's too much techno babble to, to make the concepts here. So, so maybe I can help out just speaking um, a little extemporaneously uh, on this point, right? And, and forgive me if I sound a little ignorant because I don't follow every last change that goes on in this document. But I think that so long as, um, I think time is something that just has to be asserted like anything else, right? And, you know, you, you, the, the, the tester can assert it and you can trust that value or not. Um, if you're the collector and you receive the information from the tester, and you're also able to receive a timestamp uh, or, or an actual time from the attester, you can choose to determine from, from how, how far from reality uh, or, or your reality you think the attester is, for instance. These are- That's what, that's what line 865 says, Elliot. Okay, I'm sorry. But yes, you're right. Um, and I think that was the intent of 865. Okay, then I would suggest the, that that this should be described not with using the word epoch anywhere. Yeah, that's what Mike and I were saying. Yeah, we have to establish a, a very very known word refer to the time that, that you simply refer to time in a universally in a, in a timestamp format that is universally recognized. Yeah, but I agree with that, especially since this is the, if you look at the heading in 861 that's commented out, this is the synchronized clock stuff. And so talking about this one in terms of timestamp, it's certainly correct in this context. So yes, I agree with you, Elliot. Yeah, but you have to, have to make sure that it fits everywhere and then we're using the right words. That, that's fine. We, if Epoch is confusing and it is literally defined as the origin of a time scale, I'm pretty sure about that. Um, but uh, if it's too complicated and too techno babble, as Dave said, um, we have to make sure that we mean that we start to count time from zero here. That's it. I think discussion of counting time from zero is a confusing way to phrase it. I know it's here. confusing. I know it's confusing. So that's why I'm not, would, would never write that. I would always say it's the origin of my time scale. And then I'm, I'm pretty sure that people can look that up. And so yeah, but, understand what this means. So the okay, so ICNF has a timestamp standard. Um, it, the only issue is that it is um, ASCII. It's not a binary format. Um, but if you, you know, if you need a binary format, at least you can. You have something to start with, and you might want to look at that. So, so, but, but, but we're not. Sense. It's not about. It's not about how we encode it, because that's about the protocol's problem, right? It's about. It's about the fact that we want to say, and I, and I, and correct me if if we're in disagreement here, Dave. We need to work. We're looking for a word that describes the relative zero time. Uh, I don't understand why we're talking about zero time. I think that concept is something that makes it hard to read. Let me well, ask another it's, question. It's the translation. It's the translation between the the time of uh, of the evidence on the evidence collector's clock and the time. Uh, and the the time the internal time of the verifier. The concept, of having a, the concept of having a zero is not interesting. Only deltas are interesting, and actual timestamps are interesting. So, for example, if you look at the uh, oh. let's look at the SGX specification as an example, because Ned's not here, right? The SGX specification says that you can get uh, relative time, but uh, the zero value is meaningless. It's the same thing as in uh, so uh -huh. Elliot, you know, like in uh, counters and MIBs, right? Because they roll over, the value zero is not meaningful. All that's meaningful is the delta. Well, I, I think that uh, that well, Dave, well. you're you're okay. So I said zero because that was what we like to talk about but the point of establishing the zero is to establish the relative the point right let's just talk about if i know that. i'm well, at if i know i'm at 10 then i know where zero is but that's the point the point is to establish a a, a relationship between my time and your time right the only question i have is are do we assume that all these components have clocks in the paragraph that we were looking at here which was, you can see the paragraph that starts after 861. This is the paragraph on the case where they have synchronized clocks. There's different cases here. The 861 paragraph is the case where they have synchronized clocks. 
So here everyone I has a different time. question. Okay, go ahead. My question is that there's synchronized clocks and then there are whether the device has a clock at all, a TOD clock at all. The answer is no. Oh, no. So yeah. The question is no. Just tick counters, if at all. Uh, sometimes even have tick counters. Like even the, in the 867 paragraph, which I have not read yet, some place yeah. down there, it better accommodate the case where there is, in fact, no relative time either. Yes. Right. right, but but the I mean, point of the synchronized yeah. clocks is that that you don't you don't need to know a lot because some ex entity is telling you what the time is, Elliot. Okay, so in this one, you put in the timestamp, whether it's a timestamp on a claim basis or on the evidence basis or both or whatever, and then you put in uh, whatever information that you might want to have in claims about what your synchronization mechanism is, and then the receiver can make a. a Appraisal based on the time that you put in there and its faith in your time synchronization mechanism. That's the intent of this paragraph. And I'm saying I, I'm trying to figure out better wordings of 864 since I completely agree with the intent and I find the phrasing in 864 as written in green confusing. But I agree with the intent, so I'm trying to help fix it. Um, hit cancel. Uh, uh, another uh, way to address this would be to somehow combine the two sentences, but that starts to bleed into a run on sentence. So, I was so using it's the this... validity. Sorry, sorry. I was using, and um, you were not happy with that, Dave. I was I actually have an alternative here that is the validity span, which is a duration. Durations always start with zero. So, if you're fine with duration, uh, that is fine with me. That is maybe better to understand than epoch. Uh, you don't put in anything unless you put the so like in the evidence, right? Yeah. Then there may be no concept of a validity span as you put it in the evidence, right? If the expiration is purely on the receiver side, there's nothing inside the claims that would designate that. It's far more that's likely the attestation correct. result, and it's possible in the evidence, but it's not necessary, right? Yeah, that's why I hesitant, was hesitant from talking about validity span here. I was right. just I uh, yeah. I agree. It doesn't. Oh, that, is the, that, that is the problem. Is that is the problem. Uh, yeah, timestamp is also a zero timestamp is never cool. Um, um, it doesn't give it to anything. If it's with your timestamp would tell you zero. All right. Um, I'm going to try to pull this one up and rewrite a sentence here because it's easier to. Yeah, maybe that's happy. That's a good idea. Okay. Where do I find this one? Which pull request is this now? Uh, 91. Nine, it's okay. line 864. All right, hold on. Or... Oh, I'm gonna hit cancel and here. Typically, typically, if you talk about timestamps, uh, epoch is is not the worst term ever. Although people might not have, uh, it's very unintuitive um, um, because it's defined by PTP, like I, uh, I eight five something something IEEE, and um, that is typically known. I, I would have assumed, but uh, if we can go with something, Dave whips up. That's also fine. Uh, I think someone put out something in the chat. Yeah. So and Thomas had, Thomas Harjano uh, said something. Um, yeah, because because so if we're talking about you know collection collation of multiple claims locally before i transmit a whole bundle to verify right so that's like uh, that's little little micro deltas just right there is that is that what we're talking about um when you have an important event and you start to count time from that point of time into the future not using timestamps but the delta in duration that's called an epoch by, by technical terms. what's the policy confusing too. what's the policy event uh I, for example, uh, if you uh, if you have um, uh, a a specific kind of nonce, as Thomas would, would, would also name it here, and that as the nonce is a validity span, uh, like the, the, the nonce is only viable for a minute, and then you have to re regenerate the, the unique uh, value here. Um, you are uh, initiating this timeout for validity. Everything that's created for of evidence with this is is considered fresh. Until this 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 um, this unique value is um, 
is uh, one minute old. Then you have to scour it and create a new one. So this new one creation and this duration of a minute always starts with an epoch of zero and uh, with an epoch of uh, 60 seconds. Sorry, it uh, ends with a time scale of 60 seconds. It's an absolute time scale. Refresh. Sorry? I'm saying, Michael, please refresh. I added my other uh, suggestion. Oh, it doesn't okay. refresh. No, because, because, because I, I, I don't know. So I, I absolutely get it. I mean, you know, the, the, the verifier side could, could we could all hang on the, the, the time, the clock that the verifier uses, starting from the transmittal of the, of the challenge commands. But there's this other question that uh, component claims, but particularly in, in you know, um, layered attestation or com compositional attestations, those claims could have been sitting there for a day, right? That, that, that's going to be bundled up into 10 you know, claims and, and sent. So, so not all, not all ten will be, um, you know, in the same you know time, you know, sphere as uh, the as the nonce, right? So, so I don't know if this is worth bringing up in the architecture document that 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 you know evidences may not be generated instantaneously all the time. Yeah, that is true. Also, yes, values can be very old, as you just highlighted. They can sit around for a long time. That is value generation in our. Time consideration. Thomas, I think we we have that thing exactly in, in the in the implicit time keeping using nonce uh, uh, paragraph that is expressed quite clearly. Okay, let me let me let me look at it. Okay, sorry guys, keep on going. Yeah, so uh, Dave, you changed the text. I see it, uh, and I think it says something quite different now. But maybe Thomas uh, has a different opinion. Let me let me read. Uh, this one. But a timestamp can only be used for a fixed time, right? That's what this paragraph is about. This paragraph is about using fixed times. Right. Okay, good, good. We are narrowing the scope, but if it's still applicable. Yeah, I, I think I can live with this. It's, uh, I like it. It's not, it's not covering the whole thing, but uh, it's good. Uh, I'm Let's see about the next text a little bit. Don't, don't accept it yet. I'm going to make a trivial uh, grammatical edit here. Um, um, actually, I'm going to get it. It might, it might be okay. Okay, never mind. It, it does not. I read it again. It does not need the grammatical change. It's okay as is. Also, I like that you use generated. I totally take that. <laughs> uh, I think it's yeah. I, I did that for. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> VG. Exactly. Yeah, again, it's more specific. Maybe that's good. We are not using epoch. Maybe that has some flashback later on. We have to find out. All right, let's uh, walk down here. Start reading the next paragraph here. I'm at 867. All right, I have, uh, I, I'm down again of 877, and I'm ready to comment on those. Oh, but I'll wait till other people get to there. Well, maybe I'll put them into comments here on my screen. So 
Uh, what your line uh, is your comment ab uh, about? A bunch of them. Well, I oh, should. Bunch. <laughs> okay. Some of them are technical uh, towards the end, and some of them are pure editorial. So. Yeah, maybe we go with the uh, technical first. What do you think? Uh, lines eight seventy four through eight seventy seven are just plain wrong, and the other parts of the document already show why they're wrong. And so this is contradicting later parts of the document. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Th Thomas, do you have a... Uh... 877 is, uh, there's the counter proof of that point as to why it's wrong in a whole section. Uh, the proof is where, sorry again? 877, it's in, it's in the appendix uh, where it walks through, where it talks about how to distinguish time of creation from time of uh, uh, evidence, cre evidence creation from value generation using the non-spaced one. There's a whole section that shows that. Over there is time of collision. Seven says it's collection. not possible, which is just wrong. Yeah, so I, I did not write this text, but I can see from the wording time of collection is neither value generation nor evidence generation. Right. So ah, time okay. of collection so that just goes back to my point about time of collection is irrelevant. It doesn't matter whether it's and so that's a non sequitur. You can, we can, we can go to, to do, yes. yeah, and so I just, the, the, the line itself doesn't make any sense. So. Yeah, if, uh, 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 before so I, 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 them, I let me comment on the editorial stuff on my own screen here before I forget them. So you just, okay, sorry, let me pause for a second here. So, uh, Hank, I have a question. Um, yes, eight sixty nine. So, yes. um, I, I guess I'm going to say that I had a problem reading this each time, and I realized what it was. Uh, the remote entity. Here is the verifier or the relying party. Um, but in remote attestation, it's the attester that is remote. Uh, it is, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, it's consistent it, 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 with, the, with the rest of the all text. Of, all of them can be remote. <laughs> Pardon me? Yes. All, all of them are remote. remote. They are the, the device that the, the, the device that that the thing that I think is is more consistently remote is the attester. So I would just rather that I think I would be happiest if uh, if we change the word remote to either to remove it or to say by the um, uh, um, oh, I had a word now I lost it. I was going to say verifying entity, um, evaluating entity or something like that. Appraising entity. Yeah, no, uh, variating probably, but um, I see your point uh, because we have actually never defined what the remote thing is. A remote, yeah. yeah so, so I, yes. I, so I'm simply bringing my my bias that the remote things, the attester, and the other things are trying to get some information about it, and so that that just I that's why I hit a a a, a missed clutch, a gear grinding in my brain um, when I saw that. I went, wait, which hub? Uh, there and and Elliot says if you define a remote, you better define local, which is why I want to cross the word remote out completely. Uh, sure. I'd be happy if we just removed it. Yeah. In the introduction, we have uh, uh, the first first paragraph say says um, in remote attestation procedures, one peer, the attester, produces believable information about itself, enable a remote yeah. peer, the relying party, blah blah blah, to decide. So I think it's consistent it, okay. with the rest of the of the document. This, this rem remote this is from the point of view of uh, of the yes, uh, author. So what is remote is exact is the relying party on the very. That's part. like just saying local and remote, and uh, and we also have the connection between the um, verifier and the relying party as being a local remote uh, entity. Anyway, so that's why I would rather just remove the word remote. Or, or indicate its 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 role, which is that is a verif as the validating or appraising entity. We've used the so word same. appraising several times, uh, uh, but appraiser, I appraisal is uh, tied to very appraisal is tied to the verifier. It is uh, no, because the remote party has the has the uh, appraisal policy for the policy too. Yeah. Oh yeah, there are two now. Yeah, okay, appraising wins. Sorry, yes, thank you, uh, Paul. That was. Uh, yeah, thank you for setting me straight. Yeah. <laughs> that's my raising wind. Yeah, that's good. Yes, that's very good. Do you want me to fix the rest of them or do you want just assume that? 
We actually uh, now uh, addressed your uh, gear grinding, uh, Michael, but not the uh, um, not the Dave's. Yeah, I've been entering my comments. If you refresh, yeah, we'll get that just a second here. I probably should have done down to the bottom yet, but I'm at least part way through. Probably I could do this better. Okay, so refresh. Oh, that message. No, I've not made uh, the same change you were making. Because you were changing remote to appraising, and I didn't do that in my suggestion. So if you give me a second, I can go back and try to do that in mine. Just to make it easier to compare. Um, I don't see Dave at all. Ah, there. No, this is we already agreed on. So... I know that when you hit when you hit reload it it removes the suggestions from the batch. Uh, uh, maybe I should commit some of the batch. Let's re just commit some of the batch. Yes, that is, I think the energy stuff you can commit. It's uh, wide agreement. Wait, 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 not so fast. And this one, yeah, this is an open. I think we have. I think everybody was okay-ish enough. So we declare victory on epoch uh, elimination. Yeah, uh, appraisal is good. You did not write a commit message, Michael. Uh, it just says the commit. I know, I know, I'm not messing with you. That's okay. Yeah. Um, so Dave, I oh, there's Dave. Send. Uh, yeah, this should be remote here. Uh, correct. And then same thing later in the sentence. Fear that I'm typing appraising wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, nitty if we can do this uh, later. The great, the great I before E except after C rule in English, which is contradicted by more words than. And not so so much. Sorry, that's just let me read it once. Please. Thomas, are you fine with this top comment here? Uh, this. Uh... Yeah. So there's a grammatical change, grammatical edit, which is the insertion of the word that, which is a grammatical fix. Yeah. And then uh, the other one is the last phrase there is deleted because I found that to be very confusing. Locking a clock makes it sound like it's no longer counting. And so I just removed that because I didn't think it was essential to the point. So Thomas, is there anything last here that you want to retain or is this fine? He said. Just mute. Yeah. Sorry, I said okay. <laughs> oh, okay, huh. right. okay. <laughs> It's letting you know you're on mute. <laughs> yeah, subtly. So good. Yeah, and then it's fine. Then we uh, just uh, kick the uh, uh, at suggestion. She. Um, oh, I, I just tried to scroll down. I cannot. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so next is yeah, Dave killed stuff. Oh, yeah, you do not ex you, you said yeah, this is the this is the meaty point. So the last sentence you said, like the last point was 877, it says. Why this is not applicable because time of collection. So maybe, maybe uh, uh, Thomas, this whole t piece of text here uh, has a uh, intent. So maybe we have to uh, re capture the intent, or, or or is it something intent lost here? If we... So first, can I can I can I yes, yes. can I commit these other suggestions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hope you did. Why does it say like 
pending in back. I have no idea why that one is the commit button. Yeah. Yeah. This one's just no different idea. from. <laughs> yeah. This is weird. Bizarre. Uh, maybe the difference is whether it's from you or from me. Uh, could be yeah. whether I can remove. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. You can, yeah. Uh, this is logistics, you know. I, I I wonder if it actually is going to commit. Yeah, I had a feeling it was going to fail. <laughs> Maybe they'll merge those afterwards. Okay. So, this right. one, so here yeah. we are, rough. Yeah. Thomas. It's any rougher than the uh, uh, precision of the time synchronization. Now, time synchronization may be more precise, but the point is you got a little bit of uh, wiggle room in the time synchronization, which is, you know, your drift and so on accounted for. And the nonce is just potentially a little bit longer. That has to do with you know prop delay and back, um, but it's the same concept. There's nothing that's any more rough here than before, other than maybe the a matter of uh, degree. Right. Okay. I agree on that. I I I understood that the the reason that they want to say rough is that is that you clearly can't have an offset that says that the other entity is 27 seconds behind me uh in our clocks um and you no, because it's plus or minus now that the the round trip and all that other stuff and so it doesn't, doesn't have a clock so i don't need to synchronize with another clock. Right. You, you don't need to so that's not a you don't need to but 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 it's but the point is that you 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 can't do that there's a there's a fair number amount of error even if you could i uh, Again, I don't think there's anything interesting to say there. You no, know, no, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I'm okay. just, I'm just re-explaining my understanding of rough, and I'm saying, you, you know, you've written down much more precise uh, statement than mine, um, and but that's the way I think of it. No, but it, it, this was not the intention. My intention was to say that because the um, uh, producer of uh, of the um, payload is not does doesn't have a clock basically to annotate uh, the the claims and the values of the claims. That is the roughness here. Uh, so basically, it's all in the eye of the uh, receiver, um, and uh, and there's only one gigantic clock that can be applied to the whole payload, right? At one. Doesn't say that the uh, sender doesn't have a clock. This says the sender doesn't have a reliable clock or time synchronization. So, for example, it may have a reliable clock with no offset, so it doesn't know what time of day it is, but it knows exactly how long it is from boot. Sure, but it's not, if it's not trustable, if I, if I can trust the thing, it's just I can I might as well ignore that, right? So it's not important for me in terms of evaluating my freshness policy. I, I won't use the data yeah, on the, trust. The, the point is the same as in what was it, eight sixty, whatever it was, which is uh, that the receiver uses the claims and makes its own determination of how much it trusts the time synchronization mechanism, right? Same thing is true here. The receiver takes whatever claims it is and decides how much it trusts your relative clock if you're using relative timestamps. Meaning here, here's the deltas from uh, this claim was generated, the claim value was generated, you know, 15 seconds before the evidence was created, okay? And then it can decide whether it trusts that uh, time delta that's put in there. That's what's covered in the appendix. Right, right. So, so what I wanted to have here is cleanly separate the uh, requirements on clocks. So in this section, you have all the cases where you don't have a clock that you can trust, even if you you, you won't trust that clock, right? Or the attested clock. And if, if, you you look at that. if you look at 870, there's the word or in 870. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one of the two cases in this section is where you have a reliable clock, but there's no time synchronization. So this section covers reliable clocks that are not synchronized. That's the case I'm talking about. And this is the section that 870 says is covered in this section, which I think is good. I mean, in that paragraph, I think that's great, except for I need to edit 872. But. Well, that's, that's a good observation. Uh, I wanted to say something different, probably. Actually, I'm making a change, a proposed change to 872 to match the change that I did in the other. 
I, I'm proposing to delete the uh, point about locking clock. Okay, I just generated a single comment in 872. Yeah, so I did it in one case, but not the second case. So. So, 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 Dave, you anchored your argument very well uh, in the line 8070, and uh, uh, Thomas might have uh, realized that he might not want to extra something else, I understood. Uh, I'm just Maybe trying to make this text, which I think in general is good so far for the parts that I've read with the modifications we've done, um, I think is yeah. good. And I'm trying to make it match what is the text that's already in the appendix. I understand. I also have that in mind to go with the time consideration and align that. That is also something I think try to keep. But maybe we cannot resolve this today here. Uh, but uh, Thomas, could you uh, um, elaborate on what right now, so. was? Yeah, I know. Um, and by Thomas and uh, other Thomas. <laughs> oh, he's just dropping <laughs> off. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. I guess so, we got to so, um, call it. So Thomas uh, F, would you um, uh, be inclined to? Uh, uh, Elaborate on the intent here with, a, with another comment, and we keep this one here open so we can so it on Dave's I, I, change. My idea was, as I said, uh, to have a very clean situation where there's no clock on the other side, right? And then, and then whatever, um, and then we can compose nonce and timestamp uh, at as, as a separate thing. Okay, but here we highlight exactly what are the uh, base requirements and what we can expect from a situation that is, you know, verbal. Um, um, yeah, but, but but Dave has, has a very very good point uh, where uh, I said the or there is it's maybe confusing. So I, I should I should re reread that that sentence. But in the light in in light of that uh, uh, sentence, then it, it, Dave's comment is correct. Is absolutely on 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 point. So I will need to look a bit more at the at that sentence. Okay. That my, I don't know whether it's clear uh, to you. I, I managed to communicate it to you, but <laughs> that was my my thing. To have the, the the clear, the clean, cleanest cut possible between the two worlds. Uh, in terms of, you just want to come back to this next week, then? Because, like I said, so, so far I I actually agree with the or being in there. So maybe my intent is different from yours, but I liked the paragraph exactly. one of the modification <laughs> we did. So. <laughs> Okay, let let me have a you know quick look um, okay. in the next ten minutes, and then. All right, All right. and uh, like I said, I still have not read past my last comment, and so um, I will try to read through those. But uh, looks like we're already over time, so uh, we come back to that next week. Like eight, what eight eighty? What no? Uh, uh, 881 on down, I've not read yet, so uh, probably have comments on 881 on down, or at least I might. So we will pick off uh, pick uh, this up again in the next week, and uh, I think then we can have a push to freshness, maybe. <laughs> cool, thank you all. All right, thanks everyone. Cool, cheers.